Welcome again. Now we will start with the seventh keynote entitled Rethink, Remap, and Remaster e-learning forever. Presented by the keynote speaker and trainer, Mr. Warren Knight. Please welcome with me, Mr. Warren Knight. We are glad to see you here with us. Thank you. I am human, and you are human, and you, you are human, and all of you online that we're live streaming at the moment at the other end of a computer screen, a tablet, a laptop, you are human. Over the next 20 minutes, I'd like to take you on a journey a journey of understanding why being human is so important. And I'm going to share with you how we're going to fix this problem. This is my online learning equation. Just take a look at this for a moment and think about all of the core elements that I'm about to share with you, because this is broken, and we need to fix it, which are some words that I've been hearing over the last three days. I'm going to ask you to take a look at the top. We're talking about relevancy. We're talking about the type of material that's created and the context at which it's received. We're looking at the participants of how they understand what it is that we're sharing with them across from screen to screen. Now, this is key to understanding how well the information has been received. But I also look at the trainer. What is the trainer doing today to be able to add value to that other human being that's looking at the computer screen? So, does the trainer bring passion? Does the trainer have knowledge? Does the trainer make you smile and make you laugh? Because if he does, we can multiply that by how he facilitates the outcome of how you learn. Now, this equation for me is broken. And as I mentioned, I'm going to talk to you today about how we're going to fix this. How can we fix this learning equation from a human being talking to another human being? So I think we should remap and rethink the way that we are currently doing things. We need to remap a process that enables us to achieve a different outcome. And we need to remaster the way that we teach, the way that a human being interacts with another human being. So I want to share with you this quote by Albert Einstein. And I think this underpins every single thing that we've been talking about over the last three days. Because where we were in the past, back in 2012, I built an e-learning platform, and I sold that e-learning platform. I look back at it today, and it gives shivers about the way that it was created and the way that it was engaging with other human beings. It was broken. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking that we used when we created it. My name's Warren Knight, and my role today is to really help you look at things in a slightly different way. I don't come from an academic background. I mentioned I've sold one business. I've built businesses. I've lost businesses. I've got investment into companies. I really like to understand not only how technology is an enabler, but more importantly, how humans engage with other humans. Now, to do this, I wrote a book um, all about Think Digital First. And I wrote this book back in 2014. And along that journey, I've won various different accolades that's enabled me to share my vision across the world. 
very soon I'll be releasing my next book, which is called Everyday Transformation, which is all about how the people connect the dots and create a process all the way through to the technology. But don't listen to me, listen to him. I have three things that I'd like to impart on you today. And it's part of um, who I am, it's part of my ethos, it's part of my DNA. When I talk to other humans, I want to give them the confidence of what they're hearing. I want them to be able to have the skills that are needed to apply in real life experiences and real life situations so that they can learn and grow. But I also want to give them the tools. Now, I'm going to be giving you a couple of tools today that you can use wherever you are, driving in the car, sitting at home, traveling on a plane. I want to give you some of those tools to be able to help you have that confidence with the skills and the tools. I've worked with some fantastic companies in the region. I worked with MISC. I've been up to NEOM. I work with PwC Academy here. I've worked with Nesma. All of these brands, and some of them you might recognize. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to work with them. And I'm going to share with you the journey that I've taken every single one of the individuals that I've worked with, the other human beings on a journey. And I want to share that journey with you today. I want you to just take a moment I've got about 15 minutes with you to think about things from a different lens. I was listening to the previous panel talk about what we need to do from a government perspective. I was listening yesterday around how technology is going to be the enabler, how we can take that data and feed that data back to another human being, the word student was used, but to another human being to be able to help them to achieve more, achieve faster, achieve quicker, whatever they want to do to help them do that. And I do believe technology is here to stay and it's advancing at a pace that we've never seen before. But I want you to think about it from a slightly different lens just for the next 15 minutes. The first thing that we need to do is rethink. We need to rethink about how we're teaching other human beings. Words that were used in other uh, panels and presentations, the current process is broken. We need to do that. We must do this. Well, I'm here today to share with you how we can do it. But I want to share it with you from the ground up. My experiences and the experiences of other people that I know and that I work with. This is my home studio. As a teacher talking to other human beings, I want to create an environment that allows me to give all the energy that I've got and the knowledge and experience to the other human beings down the lens of the internet so that they can feel and see that passion. I have a stand-up desk. I've got four different screens that I work on. I use a piece of technology called OBS, which is connected to a little panel called Stream Deck. In a split second, I can change from a PowerPoint presentation to be online, to engage using uh, Kahoot. If I'm getting engagement from the other human beings at the other end of the line, and they've just come up with an incredible answer to a problem, I can push a little button, awesome, appears on the screen. For me, this is about um, taking them on a journey, a journey of how a teacher can give everything that they can give and the other human beings can take that information in just as if I was in the room with them. One thing that came out of a panel question yesterday was, we need to upskill teachers. Well, I think this is a great way of doing it. Give them an environment that allows them the flexibility to do what they need to do in a split second. Just like the conversations you heard earlier about chat GBT, the way that it can give you an answer to a question. 
Uh, I, was, I flew two days ago from Amsterdam, where I created 30% of my presentation using ChatGPT and MidJourney, the content and the visuals. I use the AI technology to create presentations. So we know it's there, we know it can achieve some outcomes, but it's the way that we present and the way as a teacher, we can really impart that knowledge on those other human beings. Why are we teaching? Why do we want to change the things that are broken? to use words that people have been using today and yesterday and the day before. Now, I asked you to look at things from a slightly different lens. And what I mean by that is, what we teach today and how that other human being takes that information on board starts to craft a journey for that individual in regards to where they want to go and where they're going. It's our roles, it's our responsibility as teachers to be able to do that. So why are we doing this? For me, I have a different why. And I would like to introduce to you these two beautiful girls. These are my daughters. You have Blossom, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> you have Blossom here who's on your left, she's four years old. And you have Dixie, which is on the right, She's five years old. Dixie is only here today because of artificial intelligence. That's why she's here. That's why I say, I believe in technology. We went through three rounds of fertility treatment and an 18-month journey of being educated to have Dixie. And in that moment, my wife and I became mum and dad. But Dixie had different ideas. Dixie wanted us to be a family, so completely naturally, Blossom came along. So the way that I look at this, it was buy one, get one free. Now, I got told 22 years ago, I'm going to be 53 this year, 22 years ago that I could never have children. A specialist told me that I'd never be able to have children. So you can imagine how I feel every single day about my children. Because they're right, their jobs have not been written yet. And that's why my wife and I have taken the responsibility to home educate our children. Every single day for us as teachers and parents is about teaching our children what the future is going to look like. Not waiting till they go to school, not waiting till they go to university, today. We've taken that responsibility to be able to do that because we don't know what job they're going to have by 2035 when Dixie's 18 years old. How do they learn? They learn by doing. Just out of curiosity, how many people here have children in the room? Okay, we've got quite a few people. A big hand going up in the air. I love that. You know how creative children are. You know how they learn by doing, when they play and how they understand what it is that they need to be doing. And they take that and then two days later, they surprise you in understanding what they learned two days ago and they apply it over and over and over again in real life circumstances. So this is the why. I think if we don't fix things now, by the way that we're educating other human beings online, they're going to take this broken environment, to use words, and then they're going to apply that to their children and so on and so forth, which is the reason why we took the responsibility to home educate our children. For those of you that put your hand in the air, you'll understand this word. Children are creative. They continuously have um, these environments that allow them to have creativity. And so through this lens, I want you to think about it from a teacher's perspective. If a teacher can't impart that knowledge to another human being, for them to be able to apply it in the way that they like to do it, once again, we are, have a disconnection. So just to put some context around this for you, 
divergent thinking. Well, prefrontal cortex, we have three different um, networks that enable us to be able to think creatively. Divergent thinking, uh, uh, creative thinking is what students should be doing and human beings should be doing over and over and over again. So I'm going to give you a very quick tool. And if, if you're up for doing something a little bit different, please walk along this journey with me. I'm going to put you in a creative state by doing something that's called open networking thinking. Just for 60 seconds, just for one minute, close your eyes. Close your eyes. I want your memory to start getting excited about what are you doing this evening? That phone call that you had earlier today. Let your mind be free. Let it think about all these different ideas. What's your journey home going to be? What music are you going to listen to? Are you going to call on the way home and tell about the event that you've been to? 60 seconds of allowing your brain to quieten down and just be creative. Imagine if we as teachers were able to share that knowledge with other human beings during that journey. So that's all about creativity. This is divergent thinking. Then we come to critical thinking, convergent thinking. This is where we are trying to solve a problem with one answer. We have a lot of academia in the room. We have scientists in the room. This is a great example of critical thinking. So I'm going to give you another quick tool to be able to help you get focused and solve one thing. I would like you please to, let's have a look around the room. Um, see that chandelier there? Stare at that chandelier for one minute. Just look at that chandelier for one minute and don't think about or do anything else but look at that chandelier. You create an environment where you focus on one thing. I'm looking at the camera right now. I'm going to wave to the audience that are online, but I'm staring right at that dot. My brain will not allow me to think about anything else in a creative space, uh, an environment that's full of memories. All I'm doing at this point is looking at one environment, allowing me to think about how I'm going to solve a problem. Critical thinking, convergent thinking. I think teachers need to understand this just that little bit more to help get better engagement with the other human beings at the end of the World Wide Web. And my final part of how we're going to rethink, remap, and now we're going to look at remastering. I think we need to look at how humans learn. We as individuals, I learn by online training programs, I learn by being in the room with people, I have various different certifications that I've accrued over the years. So I learn in very many different ways. But I think there's something that's been missing. And fortunate enough for me, this region has enabled me to apply this. And it's that critical element that's been missing. And that is the applied learning strategy. It's not about how we teach another human being and how that other human being says, thank you very much, they turn the computer off and they walk away. That for me is not how I teach my children. They learn by doing and by creating an environment that allows the other human beings to come together creatively, collaboratively, with a focus of solving a problem based on the information that they've now taken, this for me is the answer to that question. Creating capstone projects for companies has made the difference. Enabling people to be able to take that information in and apply it in real world circumstances. Now, you'll notice along this journey, there is always the feedback loop. We as trainers need to be better facilitators. We need to understand the concepts of mentoring people. How can we coach them through that journey in regards to what it is that we want to achieve? 
And this applied learning strategy is something that we do after we've shared and imparted that knowledge onto another human being, creating that environment where people can collaborate, where they can be creative in those environments and think critically to be able to help solve problems. So this for me, the applied learning strategy is how we as teachers can make a difference today. I've done it for various different organizations. You'll notice me at the back there. I'm online. My business partner, whose also name is Warren, he's the one sitting there with a big smile on his face in the room. And every single organization, the ones that I shared with you earlier today, have all been on this journey of imparting knowledge to other human beings online, sometimes blended learning, but other times 100% online. And then at that point of when we've finished imparting that knowledge, allowing them to go off in real world circumstances and apply that information. Here's another one. You might recognize some of the brands, some of the images that have been shared. And it's been an incredible experience for me to be able to apply this applied learning strategy to other human beings. So as I said, this is broken. The way that other human beings that are taking that information in to be able to make sure that it's relevant, there's context, and we're multiplying that by how the engagement is. And then how the teacher is making the audience smile. How the teacher is knowledgeable, comes from a place of passion. This, for me, is what's broken. And the applied learning strategy is how we can fix it. And we can fix that today, not tomorrow, not next year, not next month. And we don't need technology, as in chat GPT or AI, to do it. So I think let's create an environment that allows us to apply what we've learned and upskill teachers to be able to start adding value after the point they've finished imparting their knowledge on them. So my name's Warren Knight. I am human, and so are you, and you, and you, and you, and everybody online. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Knight. Now we would like to present you with a keynote of our appreciation presented by uh, Dr. Sultan Hussain, Amid Amada Taqniyat al-Malumat. <laughs>